We love the iPad mini with its compact size, swift performance and more wallet friendly price, ticking all the right boxes in our eyes. That said, there were still a few things that we weren't fans of, including that low res screen. Now though, Apple has a chance to fix these issues as it preps the launch of the iPad mini 2. Here's what we expect to see when Apple's second generation mini tablet touches down. From a design perspective, we're not actually expecting the iPad mini 2 to look that much different from the iPad mini. Apple's got quite a winning formula there. Um, what we are expecting is some new colors. So in the style of the iPhone 5S, uh, we're expecting to see space gray and gold and silver, uh, but with a kind of monotone, not the two-tone that the iPhone 5S has gone for. I'm not sure we're gonna see that many changes in the iPad mini 2, simply because Apple redesigned its tablet for the iPad mini. It might be a little bit thicker though, because we are gonna see a bigger battery, I think. Um, and it might be a bit more colorful, but I think that color will be gold rather than the pinks and the greens of the, of the iPhone 5S. In terms of specs for the iPad Mini 2, the display is the one that we're really focusing on. Some sources are saying it's going to have a retina display, others are saying it's going to stick with the display from the original. Now we love the iPad Mini, but the one downfall it had was the display. So if it doesn't come with a retina display this time around, it's going to be a huge mark against it. Retina display, yes or no? This is the real kind of contention point of the iPad Mini 2. We were actually expecting it on the original. It seems obvious that Apple would roll it out into the iPad Mini 2, but we're kind of hearing rumblings from the rumor mill that it might have decided not to. We'd be very surprised if Apple decided to up the pixel density and not go Retina. So uh, we really think the Retina is on the cards this time. The iPad Mini 2 has to have a Retina display. I mean, we were all really gobsmacked that it wasn't there in the first iPad Mini. So it has to be there this time around because consumers really want that sharper display. On top of that, we think we'll see the A7 chip. And that'll be there for two reasons. One, touch ID fingerprint scanning should be in the mix. And secondly, we really think that it needs that to power all those different pixels and the graphical processing on that chip is so much better. Well, we've already seen the A7 chip in the iPhone 5S, which is obviously the flagship phone. But the iPad mini 2, although it's not got a huge screen, has got a little bit more real estate and, and we should be able to feel a little bit more oomph from a, from a more serious chip. What we do need to see is a higher RAM. So um, at the moment there's only 512 megabytes in it. I think it needs to be two gigabyte because that's up there with the Kindle Fire HD. It'll be up there with the new Nexus 7. I think we'll definitely see the Touch ID technology in one of the new iPads. Whether it's in the iPad mini 2, I'm not quite sure. And it's purely because of cost. We didn't see it in the iPhone 5C. We saw it in the iPhone, more expensive iPhone 5S. This could be the same with the iPad 5. We'll see the Touch ID technology. Whether or not it's in, in the iPad mini 2, I'm just, I just don't know. Apple likes to tweak each iteration of the iPad, so the iPad Mini 2 will definitely have something like the Touch ID fingerprint scanner for security and ease of use. On top of that, Apple will probably put in a slightly better camera. It doesn't need to be as good as the iPhone 5S because after all, it is an iPad. But really, it does need to be something a little bit more for consumers to buy into. I have to confess, I'm not really a big fan of uh, cameras in tablets. There's something wrong about someone holding a huge device in front of their face when they should be, just be watching it live. But, you know, Apple have made a really good job of the camera in the iPhone 5S, and we'd expect to see something similar move to the iPad mini. I know a lot of people are really keen to have a good camera in the device that they want to carry with them, and that is the whole point of the Mini 2, is that people are going to want to carry it with them. Tablet pricing is a real hot topic at the moment because you're seeing things like the Amazon Kindle and you're seeing Google's Nexus tablets coming in at really low price point. Now Apple isn't known for providing a budget option but you know even the iPad mini came down to below £300 and that's a significant price point. When you look at it compared to the price of phones people think they're getting the phones for free but of course they're paying contracts so they're actually quite expensive devices. When you're looking at these high-end tablets you're getting an incredible amount of electronics for a fairly cheap price and I think that's actually quite significant. You know, if they can maybe get in under £300, I think that might be a really good price point for the iPad Mini 2. Apple devices generally hit shop shelves not too long after they've been launched, so the iPad Mini 2 should be no exception. We're also expecting to see it come at a very similar price point to before, so perhaps £270, and that will keep it nicely in competition with the likes of the Google Nexus 7. Apple has actually confirmed an event on October 22nd, and we're almost certain that that's going to be where the iPad Mini 2 and the iPad 5 will be launched. 